now we're going to start to talk about trust and what trust looks like. So there's been a lot of research about trust. It means something different to a lot of different people. Um, but one of the powerful uh, studies that Brick and Schneider did about 13 years ago was that they looked at schools that were trying to improve, and they gave schools a trust report, asked a lot of questions, tried to figure out whether there was trust or not. And what they found was that schools that had high trust reports had a decent shot of improving. But if you had chronically weak trust in your school, there was almost virtually no chance of improving whatsoever. And so again, this is where we're talking about social emotional stuff, talking about trust, but it's all connected to academic achievement. Every single one of the things we're talking about, it's in the context of school, in the context of learning, in the context of academic achievement. And so the research defines trust in four different ways. And so there's four definitions of trust. The first one is social respect. That's basically saying there's a set of norms that we're going to adhere to in this community, and we're going to follow them. That there are guardrails, and that there are things that are out of bounds. And if those guardrails are breached, someone's going to say something. right? This is particularly important for the children we were talking about earlier in creating a predictable setting where that thing that I'm really worried about happening, I know is really unlikely to happen here. Right? Social respect. Personal regard is also extremely important. That's basically that you feel like I'm going to be able to be reinforced, praised, noticed. I'm going to feel belonging in this place. That people are noticing me from the moment that I'm getting to school. Right? So if, you're knowing, if you know that kids are coming in with a set of experiences, what do you want their first interaction to look like? Especially for those of us that have metal detectors at our school. What do you want the first words that they hear to be? What do you want that feeling to be? Those are transformational, redefining moments for them to start to understand that this place is a place that's different, maybe, than the other places that I am. And so that personal regard is extremely important. Now, this is where trust starts to get a little edgy, a little hard, because everybody thinks that it's just soft. But one of the most important things about trust that there's high competence, but also that there's clarity in roles and responsibilities. If you don't have clarity about who's doing what, then you start to do end arounds, right? Start to figure out how can I do this job that's not my job, but I don't think anybody has responsibility for it, but I know it's going to impact me, so I'm going to step in, right? That never happens. <laughs> then also the competence to execute on that role, too. If you have a situation where you don't have those two things, then all sorts of other things happen that may appear like disrespect, that may appear like lack of relationships. But it's actually people worried that key roles and responsibilities are not going to be met. And so the last aspect is also hard. It's integrity. And this is basically that there's follow through, consistency, that if someone says something, they're going to do it. That this is a place where interactions are predictable, where I know if someone says they're going to send that email after the meeting, they send it. Where if we're doing a three-year initiative on this, we're actually going to do it. Right? If you start to feel like that's not true in this space, then you start to do all sorts of other things to mitigate that. You start to not engage because you've seen this before. You start to not trust that someone's going to do something. You start to get into micromanaging and reminding people and feeling annoying. right? But these are the, the core aspects of trust. So it's really important to break it down and to think about in your own experiences, how do you rank them? These are all contextual, too. One of the things that uh, was really interesting, I was doing a training for DCPS principals in DC. And they were talking about the, the aspect that was most important for them was competence. They really wanted teachers that knew their role, delivered on it. That's how you earn their trust, that you followed through. They were very, very into this idea. Then I asked them, what do you want from your instructional superintendent, your boss? <laughs> well, I want respect. I want personal regard. I want praise. I want a relationship. So it's context dependent too, right? Same thing's true in a classroom. 
You know, teachers want children to turn in their work, follow the rules, competent in what their roles are, all that stuff. But if you ask a child what they most want, they may say they want respect, right? So it's context dependent. And having that awareness is really important. So take a second and just think about for you, someone's trying to earn your trust. What, what, it, what do you default to? What do you gravitate towards? So then ask yourself this next question. Who, and you might have gone right there, right when we started talking about trust. Who do you have a high degree of trust with? Why might that be? Are they similar to you? Do they gravitate toward the same default? How do you develop that? What's, what's the aspect of that that you've really focused on? And think about who you have a low degree of trust with. How did that happen? What did that person do or not do that led you to think that? What might they say about you? Yeah. Someone who you have low trust with. For that, those principals that we were talking to, they had low, tr low trust in some of their staff, going right there for them, really frustrated by them, thought the issue was just with them. But I bet if you asked some of those staff about trust, they wouldn't trust that principal either. Right? So sometimes we need different things. And this is where it's really important to start thinking about what, what does the person I'm interacting with need? Because if I have something, especially if you're in a leadership role in a school or a district, if I have something that I am really saying is really important to me, you may need to go a little bit of a different route and meet someone where they are first in order to get what you need done. So now think about your highest need students. Again, going back to that concept of risk, what does risk mean? Your highest need students, would they say that they have relational trust with adults and peers at your school? Think about that really challenging kid that everybody knows, and they walk in that door. Is that first interaction showing high personal regard with them, no matter what they're bringing in? Are they feeling respected throughout the day? Are there things that won't happen to them, that won't be said to them? Are they in a classroom with a teacher that takes responsibility for their role and actually has the ability to deliver? Right? Are they told that certain things are going to happen by you or by people in their life that don't happen? So all these things that may present as bad behavior, bad kid, start to ask yourself, are they missing any of the building blocks? How can I dive into that, prioritize that? Are they missing trust? 